this is perhaps a summary of the beating disorganisation plan that we've tried to think about to help um, particularly those who have dyspraxia um, who are so very disorganised. So, as I've already mentioned, routines for uh, homework, but really routines need to be much wider than that. The day um, needs to be organised, so bedtime, meal times, waking up time, getting out of the door in time to get to school, on time, which is hugely problematic for so many of these children. Um, and for the parents as well. And for the parents as well, yes. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants to think that you have a rigid routine, and but I think for the earlier years, if you don't establish this, you, you know, when they're older, you've lost it. There's no hope. There's absolutely no hope. And the reward schemes that we keep coming back to, if it's systematic and you never use it for punishment, you never take away a reward once it's been earned, and it's the right amount of reward, so it's incentivizing, but not so much of a reward that they're blasé and don't, don't value it. If you can get that right, that will help to establish all the routines. And then you've got major headaches out of your way um, and, and, and some hope of not, there not being the knock-on effects that, that, that will cause problems at school. Timetabling, well, it's really that's about time organisation of all kinds, um, organising times to, to do things. It, I mean, it, it, it certainly is tricky, but, for example, how do you organise weekends so that your child is doing some work? You mustn't be doing it when the child is, wants to go out, play with some other friends, or there's a favourite television programme, you have to compromise it to suit your child and not just you, otherwise there's going to be a certain amount of friction. Um, teaching time, understanding time, units of time, um, again, we keep coming back to this, but it does help better than anything else. I've mentioned subject filing and um, sorting out from the bags. You might have to do that for quite some time with your child, but if you can, using a reward system, you know, if they've got their stuff together and packed their bag, which goes into the next point as well, then they would get their point or points um, for that, and then they're much more likely to do it it will just help them to have the mindset to remember to do it on their own. But it's better if you do it or do it with them, then it's not done at all um, and it's a mess. But you have to then move on to the next stage. Um, list making and ticking off tasks when done. Um, as an inveterate list maker myself, I find that really useful, but it is hard to get in. Those who have difficulty with writing will find that quite a, a chore. Um, Post-it notes put in strategic place, places can be helpful as well, but again, if you can link this in with rewards, it, 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 it will be uh, very useful. So here's just a bit of a summary of the, the beat disorganisation. Nip it in the bud, really, before it gets overwhelming, because otherwise it certainly will be. The, the last um, slide we've really prepared is, perhaps does really relate to the older children mostly, because... Exams and tests really mustn't be a big deal for the younger children. You really don't want anxious children exam-driven the whole time. But it is a reality of their, their lives. So um, there are many bright children who are going to struggle with exams if they haven't got some um, ways of, 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 of coping and, and, and dealing with that from the early years. 
So I um, find it very useful for children to make a list of what their syllab- the topics of their syllabus that they're going to be examined on. Just seeing that there can in, in itself help children to revise because they're looking at the words and you can further encourage them to think, ah, the I don't know, rivers, the da 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 or whatever subject it is that they've been uh, learning. Um, and if especially old children have this on their bedroom walls, um, they can be encouraged to, to rehearse just as they're doing their hair or whatever. So it's, um, I like to think of this as no work work, but in fact they are working, especially if they go that little step further and say, ah, oh, this isn't quite right, I'm not sure what that is, and then they look it up but they will need to be taught and encouraged to do that. Um, It is useful, of course, to catch up on any work that's missed. Um, But if you've got a chart like the one I showed you earlier, you will know if there is any missed work. Otherwise, it will be easily forgotten. I tend to suggest a, a revision chart... This isn't a very good version of it, where um, for each subject, the topics to be learned and that are going to be examined on are written down, and then the dates to the exam. And in 15-minute chunks, because that's probably the most efficient amount of time spent on one subject, because the information goes in, if you think of a graph over time, information goes in and at a certain point the information ceases to go in effectively and the graph drops off. You really want to stop while the information is going in so that instead of spending this amount of time to learn the information, you're only spending this amount of time. So there's more time for free time and it's important to just change the topics frequently um, change the subjects as well so that it's not a chore and it gives the child good feedback so they can see, be satisfied look I've done this, I've got so many slots of revision done post-its rhymed on the fridge we had our household at GCSE completely covered with yellow and pink pieces of paper they were fluttering around everywhere but they really did make a huge difference because you pick them up play games and say right you know test on this particular one or that particular one I think also um, use of these little dictaphone machines are very useful, for, especially for children who find it difficult to write it down, making notes. They say it into there, they can do it from memory, so it's more active. Play back, check, add the next thing in, and then they can play it back again when they, um, just before bed or whenever it is, and learn that way so that it's a more relaxed way of getting the information in. But the whole thing has to be not a stress. I know we've been talking, it's not just exams that that applies to. I know we've been talking about skills and promoting skills and helping children and things that you can do. But really, it wouldn't be good if it was just one life, was just one long, relentless push, push, push for skills and exams and or homework and all of that. So the most important tip of all, perhaps, is... Relax and de-stress about it if you possibly can.